Alright, this is lesson 6.1, angles in standard position in quadrant 1. This is the first lesson from unit 6 on trigonometry. In this unit, what we're going to be doing is dealing with a lot of things we did last year on uh, sine, cosine, and tangent, those ratios, and building up to learning about what the sine law and cosine law are about. Alright, so let's get started in uh, this lesson here. The coordinates of a point P on the coordinate plane can be described by its distance from the origin. When I talk about the origin, I'm going to normally label it as O. And the angle theta that OP makes with the positive x-axis. When the angle theta between 0 degrees and 360 degrees is measured counterclockwise, from the positive x-axis, the angle is what we call in standard position. All right, and I'll explain all this in terms of this diagram here in a second. The ray OP is what we call the terminal arm of the angle, and the point P is a terminal point for the angle. All right, so in terms of this diagram right here, let's take a look. So what I talked about, uh, the first thing I said is we kind of talked about something being in standard position. Standard position just basically means it's on the Cartesian coordinate kind of plane like we have here. And we're always going to start on the positive x-axis and we work our way counterclockwise like so. All right. And so for this example right here, we're only dealing with quadrant one. So you see that theta just meets what we call this thing. This is called your terminal arm. All right. So we're trying to figure out what that angle is from the positive x-axis to the terminal arm, and then on the terminal arm we have this point P, okay, which is called our terminal point. So with that being stated, we're going to try a couple examples with this information. You're going to see what we're going to call on is some of our um, knowledge on Sokotoa and also the Pythagorean theorem. So they tell you the point P is on the terminal arm of an angle in standard position. We know that this P is located at 3, 4. So let's draw ourselves a picture to get started here. So since I'm only dealing in the first quadrant, you're going to notice that I'm just going to kind of focus on those quadrants. Okay, So this would be where the origin is, like so. And they tell you that point P, I'm just going to estimate, is right here. P is at 3, 4. And this will be my terminal arm. Of course, P is my terminal point. If I do this and I make a triangle with the positive x-axis, you'll note that I get a right angle triangle, like so. And we know that the horizontal distance must be three units because I've gone over three for my x coordinate up there, and I've gone up four, so four would be on this side. They're trying to get you the distance of r, and so you understand what the distance of r is. That's the distance from the origin to your terminal point. So I'm going to just put an r right here. So how do we get r? Well, we're going to need to use the Pythagorean theorem. So in order to do this, I will take my three squared, and I will add my four squared. And I'll set that equal to r squared. Okay, of course, using Pythagoras here. 3 squared is 9, plus 16. And we get r squared is equal to, this works out quite nicely, 25. And lastly, when I take the square root of both sides, we get r is equal to 5. All right, so we found out that the distance of r from the origin to the terminal point is 5 units. All right. B says, determine the primary trigonometric ratio of theta, or sorry, I should say ratios of theta. So we can figure out um, what this is in terms of these side lengths now, because now I know that my ratio up here isn't even r anymore. I can say that it's 5. Okay. So in order to do this, I'm going to write sine of theta, and we're going to do a little bit of a review here. If you remember, for sine of theta, the so kato, I'm able to just write that over here. What that means is the sine ratio has the opposite over the hypotenuse. The cosine ratio has the adjacent, A over H, adjacent over the hypotenuse. And the tangent ratio has the opposite over the adjacent. Okay. So in terms of this triangle that I made here, I'm just going to substitute these in. So to determine the primary trigonometric ratios, well, I can say then that sine of theta, in terms of this triangle, is equal to my opposite side or my hypotenuse side. My opposite side, in terms of this angle, this being theta right here, would be 4 over 5. OK, 
cosine theta is going to be equal to the adjacent, which is 3 over 5. And lastly, tangent theta is equal to my opposite 4 over my adjacent 3. Okay, so these that I highlight like so, those are my three different uh, primary trigonometric ratios for theta. Lastly, C says, determine the measures of theta to the nearest degree. Well, you could use any of these ratios above. You could use the sine, cosine, or tangent of them, and you would have gotten the same answer. So I'm just going to arbitrarily go and take this first one right here, and we're going to find out what theta is. So it says, um, determine what it is. So I'm going to take sine of theta, and I'll take that, and I set it equal to 4 over 5. And now we need to isolate. In order to get theta by itself, what I'm basically doing is I'm dividing by sine on both sides. This gives me the sine inverse of 4 over 5, like so. Okay. Now, using your calculator right now, you need to make sure that you're in degree mode. All right, so double check. For most of you, you'll have a scientific calculator. There should be a little D on the top, or it may say DEG. And try putting this into your calculator to make sure everything's working OK. So hit that sine inverse button. It'll often be the second, then sine inverse. Put in 4 divided by 5. And to the nearest degree, you should get 53 degrees. And just for kicks, you could try all of these, and you should get to the nearest degree 53 degrees. All right, trigonometry is essential to navigation. A direction can be described relating it to two points of the compass points. For instance, you could have north, south, west, and of course east when you're dealing with a compass. So for example, uh, a heading of west 15 degrees south means from a direction due west rotate 15 degrees counterclockwise so we would first go out west so west is taking us out this way and then from there we're going to go 15 degrees south so we go counterclockwise so that means that this angle right here we would say is 15 degrees so that would be um, that direction all right uh, another example, a heading of west 30 degrees north means from a direction due west, rotate 30 degrees uh, clockwise. So this one's saying that we go west, but this time we're going 30 degrees north of that. So that would be this angle like so. Okay, that would represent 30 degrees right like that. All right, so you're going to see that a lot of uh, what we do in this unit, we're going to be dealing with um, something called bearing, which we'll talk about uh, in the future here, and uh, these different uh, compass uh, coordinate points. All right, example two, let's try out uh, some of this information. A forest ranger sees smoke rising from a point that lies in the direction east 40 degrees north. She estimates that the distance from the ranger station is about 30 kilometers. The firefighters at the ranger station have to travel east and then north to get to the fire. To the nearest kilometer, how far should the firefighters travel in each direction? All right, so here's, uh, here's the scenario that we kind of have, right? Let's maybe draw ourselves a little bit of a picture here. So this is where the smoke's coming from, that region right there. And what else do we know? We know that the distance from the ranger station, so from P to O right here, normally called our R, we'll write that this is 30 kilometers, okay? We know that we have gone east, and then they want to go 40 degrees north, so that this angle right here is 40 degrees, like so, all right? So what we want to figure out, right, is how far do they have to go in this horizontal direction and how far do they have to go in this vertical direction like right there. So essentially I'm looking for both of those. I'll add them up and I will uh, call her a day. So let's first find the distance E. So I'll make a little note of that. First, find the distance east. Okay, and maybe I'll just write that this is the ranger station just so we know. So, in order to find the distance east, well, if you take a look at this, I know what my reference angle here is. I know it's 40 degrees, and I know that my hypotenuse is 30. Well, that gives me enough information if I just use the right uh, ratio right here to figure out what this distance is right here, right? So, uh, in terms of this, I'm going to call this horizontal distance x. We'll just label that x like so. So, therefore, I'm going to use the cosine ratio because I'm looking for my adjacent side, and I have the hypotenuse. So, cosine of my reference angle being 40 degrees is equal to my adjacent x over 30, my hypotenuse. Now from there, you might have remembered this from uh, grade 10. How do you isolate for x? Well, the way that I isolate for x right here is I essentially multiplying both sides by 30. When you do that, what really ends up happening is the 30 just pops right out in front here. And so we get 30 cosine of 40 degrees 
is equal to x. You can put this into your calculator, and I believe uh, you will get approximately that x is equal to 23 kilometers. Okay, so you can give that a try, making sure you're in the right mode again, like so. All right. So the next thing we need to do is we need to find the uh, vertical distance. So find, we'll make a little note here. Actually, maybe we'll do it in a different color for this one. Let's do it in blue. So next, find the distance north. So this time what I'm going to do is I'm going to look for this variable on this side we'll call y. All right, so the ratio that has my opposite side of my hypotenuse this time is going to be sine. So we have sine of my reference angle being 40 degrees is equal to my opposite side y over my hypotenuse 30. And again, when you have the variable in the numerator right here, you can always just bring the 30 out in front. So we get 30 sine of 40 degrees is equal to y. And that tells me that y is equal to, I believe, to the nearest kilometer, you get approximately 19 kilometers. Okay. So in this question, we've been able to figure out how far they need to go east, sorry, how far they need to go yeah, east and how far they need to go uh, north. 23 and 19 kilometers, respectively. All right, let's go on to our last page. So on the next page, what it says is, for an angle theta in standard position, so basically just on this coordinate grid like we have here, the Pythagorean theorem can be used to relate sine of theta and cosine of theta. All right, and this is basically what we just dealt with on the previous page. All right, so let me explain here. For instance. If I know that this corner right here is at r cosine of theta and r sine of theta, well, you might ask, well, how did I find that out? Well, keep in mind that in order to figure out that horizontal distance that we just did, right, we took r and we multiplied it by cosine of theta. All right, so that was when on the previous page I went and multiplied those two things together. Well, that gave me my horizontal distance. Then I did the same thing for the, um, the vertical distance here. I multiplied r times sine of theta. So therefore, those coordinates right here must be how you get to p. And I can prove to you kind of how all this works. All right, so if we take this, let me we'll just erase all these little circles. Imagine I, con I take my horizontal distance here. So I'm going to call it r cosine of theta. Okay, and we're going to put it into Pythagoras. So I'm going to square that. Then I'm going to take my vertical distance here plus r sine of theta, and we square it. All right. and then I'm going to take my hypotenuse here, which is r, and we'll square it. So I really have my a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Watch what happens now when I go and square everything. I get r squared all multiplied by cosine theta squared plus r squared all multiplied by sine of theta all squared is equal to r squared. Well, if you notice at this stage right here, there is 1, 2, 3 r squares. So therefore, what I'm going to do is I'm going to simplify. I'm going to divide out an r squared from all the three terms. When you divide this out, we get cosine of theta all squared plus sine of theta all squared is equal to, when we divide everything by r squared, we would just get 1. All right? And this expression is called the Pythagorean. identity. Okay. And so we'll often express this in simplest terms as cosine squared theta plus sine squared theta is equal to 1. Okay. In addition to the Pythagorean identity, I also wanted to talk to uh, you guys about how we can determine the exact primary trigonometric ratios um, down here. So these are the two last little notes. Uh, this uh, example kind of that we're going to do here, we're going to build on a lot more in the, in the next unit. I think you'll see that your homework for this section is going to be fairly straightforward. Uh, the note here, the exact primary trigonometric ratios can be oops, determined for certain angles by drawing triangles on the coordinate grid. Consider isosceles triangle, triangle OPQ drawn in quadrant 1 with side lengths equal to 1 unit. Well, what we can see here is um, we can determine all of these uh, trig ratios with the information that we have. For instance, if we start by determining this missing side length OP, okay, how can we figure out that missing uh, side length OP? Well, we just have to use uh, Pythagoras. So let's make a little note here. To determine OP, use our good friend Pythagoras.